Yo guys, today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite 8th grade syndrome character, Gundam Tanaka. Sometimes I just imagine Hifumi being split into two different characters. The part of Hifumi that people can tolerate becomes Gundam, and then the part of Hifumi that people hate, the perverted side, becomes Kazuichi. Maybe that's a weird thought, but today we're not talking about Hifumi defusing, we're here to talk about Gundam Tanaka. More specifically, his actions in Chapter 4. What's interesting about Gundam's murder plan is the various interpretations I've seen people have on his motive. For example, most people do believe that Gundam sacrificed himself for everyone else so they could live. But there's also some people out there who think this is a load of BS because of how crafty his murder plan was. From both of these viewpoints, there are many different interpretations of what Gundam was trying to do and what he would have done if the trial went differently. Today, I'm going to use Gundam's actions and dialogue to form my own conclusion on what Gundam was trying to do, and I'm also going to look at other interpretations of what Gundam was trying to do here, and talk about whether I agree or disagree with these interpretations. So let's get on to the first one. Gundam was testing everyone's intelligence. He wanted to give them a challenge before he ended up revealing that he was the killer all along. Yeah, this is one interpretation I've heard, and it's one I don't agree with at all. The main reasoning being the crime itself. The only reason the group was able to pin the crime on Gundam was because of Fuyihiko. Fuyihiko was coincidentally in the lounge and because of this, Gundam wasn't able to go into his room when the alarm started ringing. Gundam shouldn't have been able to hear the alarm because he was in the deluxe room and him hearing the alarm proves that he was out of the room. Therefore, he's the culprit. Now imagine if Fuyihiko wasn't at the lounge and this scenario played out exactly as it was supposed to. There would be nothing linking Gundam to the crime. That would be a pretty bad test if you ask me. Now yes, there is his hamsters, and that's a pretty big part of it too because how are you going to get the sneak on Nakamaru? But in my opinion, that's not conclusive enough. I mean, characters could just trick him uh, into getting his, his button pressed. I think it's too hard to say if the hamsters alone are enough. Also another thing is that Gundam tried to close off the mystery of the funhouse. Nagito had to solve how the funhouse worked, and if he didn't go into the final dead room, he would not have known how it worked, and therefore no one in Strawberry House would actually be a suspect, because initially it seemed as if they were closed out of the grape house where Nakamura was murdered. The only thing that really pins down Gundam very clearly is a coincidence, and that is Fuyihiko, and that is why I believe that Gundam wasn't just setting up some test for their crew. Now the next interpretation of the situation is that even if the students didn't end up catching Gundam as the Blackened, Gundam would just reveal himself as the Blackened by the end of the trial. This is another scenario I disagree with. My reason for disagreeing here is because of what Gundam preaches in this trial. He thinks it's blasphemy to give up on life. If this is his view, what reason does he have to go against this view? Why would he sacrifice himself for everyone else if he thinks it's wrong to give up on life? This is further proven by his well-crafted crime. He made it really hard to pin the crime on him with conclusive evidence. Remember, he did this in a hungry state as well. With the amount of planning that went into this case, it really does look like he stood for his views of not giving up on life. Next are the people who think the game praises Gundam too much. If Gundam wanted to sacrifice himself for everyone, all he had to do was kill himself and make sure everyone else could easily identify his death as a suicide. I disagree with this argument because I don't believe Gundam is supposed to be a character who will sacrifice himself like this. Again, he sticks to his ideals of not giving up on life easily. So that leads us to the last one. Some people believe that Gundam was trying to survive and nothing else. He just wanted to escape and he didn't care if everyone else died. This is another perspective I disagree with. My main reasoning for disagreeing with this is what Hajime says at the end of Trial 4. Hajime believes that Gundam sacrificed himself for everyone else and Gundam avoids the question and sticks with his persona. This line confused me a lot when I first played the game. I didn't understand how Hajime came to this conclusion when Gundam just told us he killed because he didn't want to die. But that line wouldn't be in the game for no reason. 
This is similar to what I thought in the first trial of Danganronpa 1. Kyoko made the claim that as Saiko's dying, she was thinking of Makoto. Now the first time I heard that, I thought it was absolute bogus. I was so pissed at Saika and I thought Kyoko was just full of shit. Makoto even agreed with me. Kyoko's reasoning for believing that Saiko was thinking of Makoto was the fact that Saika wrote the dying message. At that very moment, me and Makoto had the same thought and just believed that Saika was probably getting revenge on Leon. Kyoko admits that it's a possibility, but Kyoko believes that Saika was uncertain about all her actions. She wasn't certain if she could go along with killing someone or framing Makoto, and that's why Kyoko believed Saika's plan failed in the first place. She just hesitated. Even after hearing this interpretation, I was left pretty unconvinced. Her plan could have just easily failed because she was trying to kill someone athletic. But then again, the game left us here for a purpose. It had to mean something, and when I went back to replay the game, it was clear that Saika wasn't as evil as I thought she was. The game made it pretty clear that she did like Makoto, but once she saw her motive, that's when she snapped. We could see moments where she went into panic mode, and then moments where she did recover. Once I replayed the game, it made it much easier for me to believe what Kyoko said. Did Kyoko come to a natural conclusion? In my opinion, not really. From her perspective, that seems like a bit of a stretch to me. But from the player's perspective, it's easy to see. I share the same view at this moment with Gundam. In my opinion, Hajime's reasoning for thinking Gundam sacrificed himself is a weird one. He thinks this because Gundam admitted his crime without much resistance. My problem with this explanation is that Gundam couldn't say anything. By the time we finished the trial, there was literally nothing he could say. There's no other evidence indicating anyone else as the killer, and Gundam used a bathroom excuse to attempt to fight his way out of getting accused after he was pointed out as the culprit. Another problem I had was Gundam's ideology of not giving up on life. If Gundam was trying to sacrifice himself, then that goes against Gundam's ideology. However, after a replay, it's easier to see what Hajime means if you look at how Gundam talks. He says things like, trample on this life. Overall, he doesn't look sad or mad that he's about to die. Other culprits would either be crying, yelling, or have some type of negative reaction. But Gundam doesn't. I believe this is what Hajime is trying to point out, but in my opinion, the point just didn't come across too well. It's also important to note that Gundam gave Nakamaru the opportunity to survive. If Nakamaru didn't want to fight, he didn't have to. He could've just ran away. However, Nakamaru decided to fight and end up losing. But this just shows that Gundam did have good intentions because he gave everyone a chance to survive. With all this information, we can form a scenario that both fits Gundam's sacrifice and Gundam's ideology. My final interpretation of the situation is that Gundam was trying to escape. He was trying to win the trial. If the students had no clue on who the culprit was, he wasn't going to give them hints, he would try to win. However, in the back of his mind, he realized that even if he killed and got caught, the end result would be good because everyone else could survive. Either way, it's a win-win situation. Killing is the best option because either he will live or his friends will live. That's my interpretation on Gundam's thoughts. I know for some of you guys, this might be very anticlimactic and some of you might just think this is the obvious interpretation. But Gundam's motive is really something that leads to a lot of debates. What leads to all these debates? I believe it's those unclear moments with Kyoko and Hajime. It's really hard to trust what they say, just because their interpretations aren't very conclusive. Danganronpa actually does this a lot with their post-trials. For example, was Celeste goal this vampire hair? That's a legitimate question. The end of trial 3 is pretty ambiguous. Was she actually motivated by the money, or was she only motivated by fear? She was definitely one of the most scared people out there. She made the nighttime rule and showed concern when people started to break the rule. Maybe it was a combination of both. Similar to Gundam, she tries to present herself as a cold-blooded killer, but she ends up showing some care for her classmates anyways. These ambiguous post-trials are some of the coolest post-trials in my opinion, 
and it's what leads to all these decisive opinions between characters. Well, that's it. That is the Gundam debate. If you guys have any other interpretations of what Gundam was thinking when he was making this mystery, comment it down below. Surely some of you guys have some wild ones, so it'll be fun to hear. I mean, through this past year, I've heard a lot of people say that Gundam's magic circle and his execution was used to protect his hamsters, which is strange. I don't know how people came to the conclusion that he could actually summon spells and stuff, but I guess he is doing something. Executions are weird. I don't know why I'm realizing this right now. The executions are really, really weird. I don't know what's going on with them, but yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time.